Welcome to Holy Bible Institute here on KAZ Radio TV. We thank God for this another wonderful opportunity. My name is Reverend J.D. Smith and I'm just thankful for this opportunity as we would begin a new class on the topic of leadership. Leadership is very important, biblical leadership is very important. God has called people to lead and we want to share with you from the Word of God what it looks like here in the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, one of the three pastoral epistles. We see Paul as he writes under the inspiration of God. He writes to a young man named Timothy. Timothy is approximately 40 years old. He's pastoring a church in a place called Ephesus, and he is having somewhat of a difficult time. Leadership is not easy. Uh, leading people, people who need leadership and yet who do not want leadership is not easy, even in the church. And so here this prison epistle also, Second Timothy is one of four prison epistles. Here Paul, as he writes from a dungeon, he writes to his son in the faith and he seeks to give him words of encouragement as he would remind him what the characteristics or marks of Christian leadership look like. Let's begin in 2 Timothy and chapter 2. Let's begin in verse 1. And the Bible says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Number one, a leader, a biblical leader, a Christian leader, a church leader, a leader for Jesus Christ, we understand very clearly, is strong in the Lord. By, be, by stating strong in the Lord, we mean a person who is strong in the Word of God. Not just strong in the doctrine of salvation, but all of the doctrines in the Word of God. The whole counsel of God. Understand the deity of Christ. Understand the doctrine of the Father. Understand the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Understand the doctrine of prayer. Understand the doctrine of the church. Understand bibliography, the doctrine of the Bible, hermeneutics, the art and science of interpreting scripture. Understand prophecy, eschatology, future events. There's so much to understand and the reality is as we study and as we grow, we also know and understand that we never graduate. We never graduate from the things of God, from the word of God, the mind of God, the oracle of God, the will of God. God who is infinite, he says, uh, continue to study my word for I have more to say. But we see within the text here in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, the text says, who is strong in the grace. That means something additional, not just strong in Bible knowledge the wherewithal and the ability to find whatever you want to find in the Word of God, but to be strong in God's grace or strong in God's favor. And how is that done? James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25, tell us not just to be hearers of the Word of God, but to be doers as well. And so a Christian leader is someone who is strong in following the Word who is strong not just in knowing it, articulating it, expounding upon it, defining it, but their walk emulate that which is biblical. Their conversation, their conduct emulates the Word of God. Their life is an open book teaching the principles the oracles, the standards of God's word. And that's what a leader does. Note, we, note we see here uh, again in verse 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong. If I'm going to be strong in anything, may I be strong in obedience, strong in God's favor. What is leadership, by the way? Leadership is to influence. We influence through a life of character and integrity. Leadership also is creativity and innovation. Leadership is different from management. Management for the most part is to manage what already has been decreed. But leadership is boldly going where no man has gone before. Leadership is influencing people to do what they really don't want to do. 
influencing the pack, the leaders, to labor, to toil, to get busy, to engage. That is leadership. And the lesson here in verse 1 is to lead by way of an example, to be strong in God's favor, strong in God's grace. May it be evident that God is with you. That's what they said concerning Moses. We see that in Joshua and chapter 1. Uh, the people had said, as God was with Moses, we pray that God will be with you and we will follow. It's interesting to note that where there is godliness, there will be the congregation. There will be the followers. God will attach people for you and I to care for as we walk with him. Paul would put it this way, follow me as I follow Christ. Because the blind cannot lead the blind. There has to be someone who has insight, someone who has spirituality, someone who knows how to reach God's ear, who can hear the voice of God as they would lead the people of God. So we see that in verse 1 as he begins here to speak to his son, Timothy, to remind him, to encourage him, to exalt him, to stay the course, keep with the task. He lays out for his son certain criterias of ministry that cannot be denied, certain criteria that cannot be forsaken. This is not up for negotiation. If I'm going to be a biblical leader, a godly leader, a Christian leader, number one, it is imperative, it is vital that I, that you, that we would be people of character, people of integrity. Integrity is what I am in the dark. Integrity is what I am when everybody else is gone. Well, who are you when no one is looking? May we understand that someone is looking, that God is looking, the triune God is looking. There's the great cloud of witnesses, there's the angels, there's the devil, there's the demon. People take note, God is taking note. And so may you and I be authentic and, and real and genuine with this thing. This is not just a Sunday morning kind of thing, a midweek prayer day kind of thing. May it become who we are, who we are, not something we put on and take off, pick up and put back down. May Christianity and godliness and holiness and sincerity become who we are. We are, may it be our very essence, our very being. For that is leadership. Leadership is not just the knowing, but the doing of truth of the Word of God. Note principle number two as we continue on this marks of leadership. And verse two says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We hasten here and say and reveal and share that leadership is also to serve as a teacher, teaching good things, teaching biblical godly things, teaching that which is sound, sound meaning that which is healthy. And we see here also that the leader is to invest in people who want to be taught. We note here that we're not necessarily commanded to waste time with folk who want to waste our time. And for the fact, time is one thing we don't have. Man that's born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Trouble on every side. Life is a vapor that appeared just for a little while. God said, I'm going to give you 70 years by reason of strength. I'll give you 80. The clock is ticking and the hour is late and is later than we think. If I'm going to do something, do it now. And if I'm going to invest in people, invest in people who want time invested in them. Instead of spinning our wheels in the mud with folk who are playing. And so we see here the leader is not only strong, but he is a teacher and he teaches individuals who want 
to be taught, who want to be taught the ways of the Lord. We are our brother's keeper. We don't make it on our own. Anything that is done great doesn't happen by ourselves. You can't spell team with an I. If we looked at team as an acronym, it means that together each accomplish much. And when there is togetherness, there is greater fruit and more productivity. It's interesting to note that in Genesis chapter 11, the Tower of Babel, they were doing the wrong thing. And yet God said, there's nothing they cannot do. Just think about people who are doing the right thing with God's sanction upon it and God's anointing upon it and God's blessing upon it. How great the work that can be done. And so we see here the leader needs help and he needs people who will work with him. People who are called to work and to labor with him and who are willing to be trained, who are willing to be taught. And when that happens, you see great things occurring. And so the teacher is, the leader is a teacher. Number three, as we continue within our text, thou therefore endure hardness. Endure the hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. A leader is someone who is able to weather the storm. Someone who understands that, yes, every day is not going to be rosy. Every day is not going to be sunny. Not always going to be on the mountaintop. Sometimes we have to go down in the valley. It's interesting to note it is in the valley where some of the best lessons are learned and taught. Some of the best lessons. We discover God's faithfulness. We discover principles in the Word of God that perhaps were not there. God give us uh, a new uh, testimony. God renew our strength. He increase our, our, our faith. Thank God for valley experiences and the leader holds on, holds on to God's unchanging hand. If there's anybody who's willing to continue to look up to the hills from which cometh my strength, may it be the servant of God, the leader who the people are looking to for leadership. The poet write that when life knock you down, try to land on your back. For if you can look up, you can get up. May the leader understand that I need to pray. I need to stand still. I need God to speak to my heart. I need to fast. That person who is leading the people of God, leading the home, leading the Bible study, is a leader of yourself. Understand that you have to endure the hardness to weather the storm. Moses, we found him just simply standing still. Abraham, we found him obedient to God. And so we want to continue to talk about the very important message of leadership, especially at a time like this. We encourage you to come and take the class, holybibleinstitute.org, biblical leadership. The Lord bless you.